I beg your pardon. Oh, I am sorry. I do apologize. That's quite all right. No, no, I mean it. I, I, don't get offended, please. I, I, it, it was an accident. I know. The devil made you do it. The devil? <laughs> oh, the devil! <laughs> yes, I see, of course, the devil! <laughs> Little boy's room. Now don't go away. I'll be right back. There. Yeah, for another round, eh? Last one, all right? No. A scotch and a vermouth, please. Rack off. Okay. I said rack off. Excuse me, the stool is mine. And the lady's with me. You're a lost lady. Mm. An ignorant fool. Mm. Well, mm. here's to us. To us. Back in a minute. Uh, mm. <laughs> mm, you were right. This place is much closer than mine. Honest Fred, the poor man's doctor. Leave that, get into the cot. Now smile and be happy. Mm. Have to go, love. But it's still early. I've got to examine a few recruits before I go to the uni. The uni? What's on there? Oh, didn't I tell you? Van der Kurs arrives today. That sounds impressive. Oh, he is. Brilliant South African heart surgeon. He gives his first lecture this morning. What? Straight off the plane into a lecture theatre? Well, he's only got four days. Oh, that sounds as if you've got a busy schedule ahead of you. <laughs> Sorry, love. Only this week. 
I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Mother. Yes, he's here. What? Oh, just a moment. Mother wants to know if Fred Carp has been in touch yet. Oh, he's supposed to arrive last night, but the flight was delayed. He should be here today. Oh, no matter. Today? Yes. Yes, I will. Hold on. Don't forget to tell him to ring Mother. She wants to know when he and Emily can go over to her place. Okay, love, it'll be a busy week for him, too. Steve? Sorry, Mother. Yes, he'll do that. Oh, he sends his love, too. No, darling, he can't talk to you right now. He's in a hurry. Yes, Mother. What's the verdict? Can't tell you. It's classified. We'll let you know. Thanks a lot, Doc. Sorry, that's the name of the game. Yeah. All through. Yeah. See you around. Stephen, I've arranged with Dr. Wills to take over while we're at university. <laughs> That'll make him happy. Hmm. He agrees that it's better that we attend a few lectures than him. So he can get in here and dissect our files. No, no, Stephen. Mm. By the way, your friend Carper arrived yet? No, hang on. Pat, could you get me Air New Zealand, please? Arrivals. No idea you've got such impressive relations. Neither did I, till a week ago. Tara's little surprise. Yes, and a pleasant one for a change. Instead of being on the periphery at this convention, we'll be right in there where the action is. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Hamilton. Ah, oh, yes. Could you tell me what time flight 321 eventually arrived yesterday? Mm-hmm. Right. Now, was there a Dr. Frederick Cowper and wife aboard? Yep. Just checking. Flight arrived early in the evening. Cara said he'd contact either her or us. Yes. Thank you. That's odd. What is? He was on the flight. No wife. Well, I thought he was staying at your place. So did I, and then he was going to Cara's for a week's holiday. But he's bound to be at the university. Yeah. Night on the town, perhaps? Reception. Ah, oh, this is room 11. Uh, do you have a razor you can lend me? I've got an electric there, do you? Yes, that'll be fine, thanks. Teddy, develop those nags yet? Good. I want the prints this morning. I'll come and collect them. Sydney University, please. Gently, man, gently. Ah, well, the newspapers have heralded his arrival. Calvin? Yes, I'm van der Kurs.
Oh. It was worth it. Hardly any cash at all. The goodies from his motel room should fetch a few bucks. Maybe, but it's still not enough. Jack and his bright ideas. Yeah, and why the photos? Insurance, in case he goes to the police. Hey, Bob, what was his name? Can you remember? Cowper, I think. Where to find out who he is? Why? Might tell us what Jack's up to. Thank you for being so patient. I apologize to you all for my unpunctuality. It was unavoidable. <clears throat> I, uh, I was going to speak briefly this morning on uh, some experiments my colleagues and I in Auckland have done uh, concerning microsurgery on children. Our experiments centered more on divining the causes of coronary disease rather than the effective short-term cures. Uh, however, on my way over here, I happen to be sitting next to Dr. Nielsen uh, from the National Heart Foundation, and uh, we discussed briefly some of the um, points of uh, our research. Uh, well, it uh, made me change this morning's lecture. Instead, I wish to discuss with you the um, public ignorance and apathy to the body's primary organ. <clears throat> I think you've been celebrating. Apart from which, I believe that uh, Dr. van der Kurz has been experimenting along similar lines, and I should compare notes with him first. Uh, it, uh, it could save us both embarrassment. <laughs> I uh, didn't wish to disturb you or your good wife last night, so I stayed in the motel. What about tonight? Uh, Steve, I think I'll remain there until my wife joins me. I didn't know Jean was pregnant. I don't want to be a burden on you. <laughs> it's no trouble. No, no. Uh, Emma will be here day after tomorrow, and uh, maybe she can help Jean. Okay, whatever you like. Uh, there is one small thing you could do for me. Mm. Lay me a hundred dollars. <laughs> well, as you know, we're not allowed to take much cash out of New Zealand, and uh, I spent what I had last night. Uh, I'll arrange a transfer to the bank, and you can have it back tomorrow. Yeah, sure. I don't know what I've got here. Um... Uh, $45. Well, that should be enough for today. Uh, thanks. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, I've got to see Van der Kurs about something. And I'll see you tonight. Uh, don't forget to ring Cara. I won't. young lady was booked into room 11. I'd like to know if she's still here. Just a moment. What was her name? Um, well, I can't recollect her surname, but her Christian name was Barbara. Are you sure it was room 11? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Harris was booked into room 11 last night. That's, that's impossible. Well, I'm sorry, sir, I can't help you. Can I see the manager? Yes, just a moment. There's a gentleman here wants to see you. Right. You wait for your moment. That girl was here, and it was room 11. Want to see me? Yes, I'm trying to track down a girl that stayed here last night, uh, room 11. Who was she? There was no woman booked into room 11 last night. I tell you, there was. Well, how can you be so sure when we know there wasn't? Well, because I stayed there too. Now, look here, that girl picked me up last night. She doped my drink and maneuvered me back here. I've since discovered that she rifled my wallet and my motel room. Can you prove this? Yes. Well, why don't you go to the police? But for a start, I think you've got the wrong motel. Hold the fort for a bit. We'll be gone for about half an hour. Right. Is that all he said? Yep. He'll stay with us as soon as Emily arrives. Oh, why hasn't he rung Mother? I don't know, love. I don't live in his pocket. Steve? Jean, he's here on business. Not to have social intercourse with your mother. Now he'll ring her when he can. Well, did he say why he didn't bring Emily with him? No, but I'm sure he'll explain all that at dinner tonight. Now, 
I'm very busy now. All right. I get the hint. Bye. Bye. Come in. Stephen. I need your help. Stephen, I don't want the police involved. If any of this leaks to the press, I've had it. The smut rags would give it headlines. All the work I intend to get through this week would be of absolutely no value. Well, how can I expect people to listen to me discussing coronary diseases when I'm labelled a dirty old fool who's had his wallet pinched by a pretty young girl? It won't leak to the press, I guarantee. I can't take that chance. There's also my wife to consider. This friend of mine will investigate it discreetly. No, Stephen. Now, if you insist, I shall forget the whole matter. I don't like being robbed. Apart from that, I'd like to point out to that girl the use of coral hydrate on a man who's been drinking heavily is a very dangerous practice. It can precipitate a heart attack. You sure it was coral hydrate? Oh, yes, positive. I recognize the symptoms. I'm still suffering from them. All right. How can I help? I want to find the girl. Look, this is a big city, and it'd take a long, long time. Now, Stephen, I must find that girl. There are also some personal papers in the wallet. I must have them back. Fred, I'm not a policeman. All I've got is a description and a vague one at that. We haven't got time to look for the girl. Your schedule won't permit it, neither will mine. Now, believe me, the best way is to get in this friend of mine. No. It's the only way. All right, Stephen. But if anything goes wrong, I hold you entirely responsible. Okay. I'll go on calling from the outer office. Meanwhile, you get on that phone and ring Cara, please. Oh, good Lord. I've completely forgotten about her. Mm. She's been reminding me. Persistent woman. Okay, thanks for calling. I'll take over. Go and have some afternoon tea. Okay. Thank you. got it. Her uh, jaw is a little rounder there. That's it. Yes, that's her. Yeah. Good looking girl. Yes. Oh, print a couple of dozen copies and circulate them round the cross patrols. If anyone sees it, they're not to bring her in. Contact me. Right, touch. Well, uh, let's go over this again, Doctor. I told you the girl doped me and took everything out of my wallet. I discovered that everything was gone when I arrived at the university. Now, fortunately, I had five dollars in my trousers and could pay the taxi. Later on, when I um, arrived back at my motel, I discovered that my room had also been rifled and some jewellery and a brand new cassette recorder was taken. It must have been the same girl. Otherwise, why dope me? I agree. Yes, well, I think I've got the details of everything that was taken. You're pretty unlucky, Doctor. That is an understatement. Where can we reach you? Hmm? Oh, I'm due for a conference with Nielsen in half an hour. Where? At his office, after which I should be back at the motel. You sure you won't change your mind about staying at my place? No, Stephen, I think it's best. Okay, we'll see you tonight anyway. Yes, sir. Uh, remember, Sergeant, discretion at all times. I'll remember. Pretty stuffy. Eminent heart surgeon, what do you expect? Yes, and a relative? Of sorts. Well, I'd better get cracking. Finding the girl's one thing, getting back the personal papers is something else. You think the motel manager might have something to do with it? Probably not. It's not an unusual sort of racket. It happens all the time. But usually played by homosexuals. What? Well, uh, what distinguished businessman will admit that he swings both ways? Any prominent citizen, for that matter. Yeah. Toby, that's him. Hey, so it is. Oh, get you. Famous doctor. <laughs> With no cash. Right. That's Jack's little game, eh? Behind our backs, too. What? Blackmail. Hmm? He's going to try and screw money out of this doctor. Well, I won't be in on it. No, me neither. That's not our game. What isn't? This isn't. What about it? 
Oh, come off it, Jack. We're not stupid. We know why you took those photos. You knew who he was. So? So we don't want any part of it. And what? Blackmail. Oh, don't be mad. I took the photos for insurance. I told you that. Cops come around, we can threaten him with them. Listen, when we started this racket, we had an agreement. There was going to be no blackmail and no violence. Just a, a simple rolling racket. Right. And I told you I took the photos for insurance. Sure, I knew who he was. I thought he'd have a lot of bread, too. Why? Because back home in Auckland, he lives in Remuera. So? So it's a posh suburb. Only rich freaks live there. You still haven't told us why. Well, rich freaks have influence. I thought he mightn't like being rolled. If the cops come round, we flash the photos at him and tell him to call his dogs off. Uh, where's the stuff out of his wallet? I've got it. Uh-huh. What was in the letters? Nothing. Jack? I said nothing. And it's lucky for you that I took the trouble to cover us. Why? Because he came back here later this morning looking for you. Looking for me? Yeah, but it's all right. I told him he was at the wrong motel. we better quit for a few days. No. Business as usual. There's too many rich quacks at this convention to lie low now. He might recognise me. That's why you'll switch. Toby, you can play hump for the next few nights. Oh. No, I don't know. It's all right. Trust me. We've got the perfect setup. Yes, love. I'll be home in half an hour. Bye bye. Come in. I got through everything sooner than expected. Any news from Gilbert's? No, not yet. Oh, damn. Well, give him time. I think he'll have something for you tomorrow. Yes, you're right, of course. What's in that wallet that's so precious? Oh, just personal things. I would like them back before Emily arrives, though. You don't have to tell me, but. I'd rather not at this stage. Uh, Stephen, uh, <clears throat> one of the things discussed by Nielsen and myself was the growing number of heart cases among senior public servants. Also, the forces, including the police force. There's too many fat policemen. I've campaigned for greater fitness, never really worked. Hmm. Look, I'm meeting again with Nielsen tomorrow. I'd like you to be there. Oh, perhaps between us we can uh, put together a campaign, strike an awareness into potential heart cases. In the force? Yes. I'm all for it. Well, I just looked in on Johnson, but he's gone. I'd like him to be there, too. Well, uh, you'll see him tonight. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I'll mention it to him then. I uh, have just completed what seemed a relatively successful campaign in Auckland. It uh, might work here. Good. We well, must clarify the disease in layman's language. Too many people think that to circumvent a middle-aged heart condition, one simply has to jog for a mile or two a week. Yeah, and that's only one way. Correct. By the way, I um, heard today that you performed an open heart on your friend Gilbert's. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, I'll uh, see you tonight. Mmm. Bell of the ball. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Need a hand? Oh, tough. See? Three months and no bulge. Wait for it. <laughs> you don't regret it, do you? No way. I'll get it. It's probably Mother again. Hello. Oh, hello, Gil. Yes, just a moment. Yes, Gil? Steve, one of our mobiles has located the girl. Great. We're trailing her. Thought you'd want to know. Thanks, man. See you in the morning. Bye. Trouble? No. Some good news about a little problem we had today. Oh. Well, here's to a successful convention. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, a touch of hypocrisy. Here we are, distinguished doctors, dedicated to the eradication of heart disease, consuming one of the killers. <laughs> well, we can't all be perfect, eh? Quite right. We all have our small failings, eh? Uh, Dr. Frederick Calvert? Yes. I've uh, just arrived for you, sir. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Now, oh, well, I wonder what this could be. That's probably a, another donation. Yes, it's uh, just what I wanted. What's the matter with him? 
I don't know, just tired, love. What's wrong? Hmm? Oh, uh, nothing, Stephen. Come on, Fred, you haven't got a poker face, you know. No, it's nothing really now. Uh, leave me alone. I'll join you all in a minute. Sure I can't help? Yes, uh, positive. <laughs> tailing me for the last couple of hours. Not an ex-customer? No. Think it's a cop? Couldn't be. Why not? I knew that bloke you picked last night was a mistake. Oh, don't be stupid. <sighs> we haven't had any trouble up to now. So how come this bloke's the first one to come looking for me? It's the odds. We've had a good run. Yeah, and now I'm being tailed by a cop. Where's Toby? In a room by now. OK, relax. Go and get a customer's keys and do his room. No. I'm retiring until the heat dies down. There isn't any. Like bloody hell. And don't worry about that doctor. I've fixed him. <laughs> you said that before. And I meant it. Now get out of here. So you lost her? Yeah, she was onto me. I've been out all night trying to find her again. What are you going to do? Get some sleep and try again tonight. I won't muck around this time. I'll bring her in and get heavy. Good. Time's running out. If anything comes up, I'm at home. Yeah, okay. See you. Come in. Stephen, I want you to tell your friend Gilbert to stop looking for the girl. Why? I should have known better. It seems that police are unable to make discreet inquiries. What are you talking about? This. It seems that while I was sedated, these photos were taken. Explicit? Enough to discredit me in the eyes of the Australian public. Oh, I think you're over-dramatizing. Perhaps, but I can't chance it. Any demands come with these? Only that I call off the police. Can't do that. Stephen, I am doing it. Emily arrives tomorrow. Substantial press coverage on the convention starts today. Nothing must jeopardize that. They're not going to stop at that. I'll wait and see. They'll demand money. Then they'll get it. You're not serious. I am. Now I want you to call Gilbert and tell him to quit. I, I have an idea that might work. What's that? Is he offered to stay at your place till open? Of course. And you have a silent number, Yes, though. I'd have, but... Now, they say they'll call and get in touch. Now, if I call off the police and make it very difficult to find me, the convention will be over and I'll be back in Auckland before they know it. They found you to give you these. Of course. But from now on during the days, I'll be in places unheralded by the press. I'll move out of the motel. You have a silent number and my connection with you is unknown. In short, I'll be very difficult to trace. All right. I'll ring Gill and tell him. Good. Meet me at Nielsen's office and we'll go over the details of the Heart Foundation campaign. I still think you're making a mistake. We'll see. Good work last night, despite the fuzz. Jack, maybe Barbie's right. How? We should lay off for a few days. No, I've taken care of it. I've put our insurance into operation. Will it work? Can't fail. Might even be some good, sure benefits in it for you. How? Never mind, you'll see. In fact, uh, Barbie, you can switch back tonight. Do you know? Oh, it isn't safe. It is. I know this carper quack. Huh? Well, not personally, but I come from the same town. Only I'm from Ponsonby. It's a poor area. But I know what makes these snobs from Remuera tick. I wouldn't risk their social status. The bastards deserve everything they get. 
It's a delightful room, Jean. Good. Would you like some coffee? Mmm, love a cup. Darling? Yes, thanks, love. So far, so good. No news at the motel. Hope it works. So do I. You do see why the police must be kept out. Yeah. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Mother. Yes, he's here. Oh, about 20 minutes ago? All right. Hold on a sec. It's, uh, it's for you. Popular man. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Thanks. How are you? Fine. Hmm? Yes, it's charming. Emily, tomorrow, I think, I'm expecting a telegram. Or perhaps you contact you. No, I'm afraid I'll be too busy until this convention is over. Well, perhaps Jean and Emily could pop up and see you. Yes. Look, um, Jean has just made some coffee. Yes. All right. Yes, I'll be in touch. Bye. No offence, I just as like long phone conversations. Oh, Mother yaks for ages. Should be a telephonist. No, oh, Emily's just the same. Jean's still learning. Oh, very funny. Oh, thanks, Jean. Oh, not again. Hello? Yes, just a moment. It's for you again. No. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, this is Copper. Who's this? Never mind, Doc. You got my envelope, I suppose. Yes, um, yes, I did. Well, that's just a mild sample, Doc. I'm afraid it's going to cost you. How much? Well, let's say around five grand. It's ridiculous. That isn't the point. Like hell. Tomorrow, at one o'clock, drop the money in cash at the Potts Point Post Office. Box number's 40. Then scram. Now, look here, I... I'm sure your wife would like to know about Sally. But I can't. Not by tomorrow. You will. <laughs> or the world will read about you. Uh, Nielsen, uh, a few problems. I see. Your coffee must be cold. Yeah. I'll get you another. Oh, thanks, Jean. They found me here so quickly. What did they want? Five thousand dollars. What? Tomorrow. I'll ring you. No. You're not paying. Seems I'll have to. It'll just be the beginning. Now, Stephen, it's more involved than you know. How? There you are. Ah, thank you, Jane. Anything wrong? No. No, just minor problems, that's all. Oh. Stephen, may I use your phone? Sure. Nielsen, uh, it's Fred Carper here. He's fine. Uh, look, uh, can I see you first thing tomorrow morning? Yes, it's very important. How is Jean? Oh, she's fine. Just gone back to bed. Let's talk. No point. Oh, I think there is. Last night you said there's more involved in this than I knew. What do you mean? Did I say that? Oh, come on, Fred. You're hiding something. If you'd come out with it in the first place... It would have made no difference to the present situation. You can't be sure of that. All right, Stephen. The main reason I was anxious to find the girl was not the money or the things taken from my room. In my wallet were two letters from my ex-mistress. Emily doesn't know about her. I hope she never will. Oh, I don't want my... Private affairs flashed all over the world. The girl was some years my junior, an Australian air hostess. I suppose I shouldn't have kept the letters, but one is sentimental about some things. Oh, none of this matters. The point is, this fellow has them. Now, hang on. The photos were of you naked in bed with the girl. Yes. It must have been a setup. You couldn't have been just a random pickup for that. Who else knows about the hostess, anyone? Nobody. You sure? Positive. In my position, one can't afford scandals. Not in Auckland, and certainly not here, not now. No, I'll get the money this morning and pay. Oh, that won't solve anything. 
Well, of course it will. I'll get the letters and the negatives. Oh, come on, Fred. I know this sort of thing. I know how it works. You pay the money, they want more. I'll risk that. Stephen, just a whiff of the police and they'll ruin my work here. And jeopardize my marriage. I love Emily. I don't want to hurt her. I had a ridiculous middle-aged fling. All right, I'll pay for my libido, but Emily needn't suffer. Gil found the girl. And lost her. Probably prompted this. Now, Emily arrives first thing tomorrow morning. It must all be settled by then. Well, let me go with you. All right. But no police. Thirty. Why haven't they called? We know who it is. Why not let Gil handle it? No, we don't know where the letters are. Nor exactly how many of them are involved. Hamilton. Yes, Jim. Yeah. I got that. Thanks, love. There's an envelope for you at Potts Point Post Office. Good. I knew my way would work. I'll see you back here. Can I help you? Yes. Give me those letters and the negatives. I don't know what you're talking about. I know about. it's you and the girl who took those photos. Now give them to me. <laughs> Look, a friend of mine saw you take the money. Now let's stop playing games, shall we? I want my things back. If you told the cops. They'd be here now, not I. But I warn you that if you don't give me those photos, I will tell the police. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. The price has gone up. Inflation, you know. <laughs> now get out of here. Be back tomorrow with another five Gs or you'll make the headlines. <laughs> Ligaments are only slightly bruised. Lucky you didn't break your wrist. Ah, I can't ask Nielsen again. Do you think Cara would lend me the other 5,000? Listen, uh, Fred, I've got an idea, a way of getting your letters back. How? Don't you worry about it. 
Better get going. You're late for the meeting. Oh, yes, I am. Now, don't you do anything, Stephen. I'll work it out. Sure. I'll see you later. credit. What? Can you lend me a few dollars? Sure. How much can you spare? I'll pay you back tomorrow. Oh, twenty dollars? Great. Police medical officer? Oh, Jean, he's just gone in to see Gordon. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, I'll tell him. Bye-bye. Uh, Jean just rang, and she said she and her mother will go out to the airport to pick up Emily in case you and Dr. Carper get held up. Good. Could you get Gil on the phone for me? Sure. Hamilton? Uh, Gil Gilbert's there, please. He's not. Or when's he due back? I see. No, no message. Double scotch, thanks. You got anything smaller, mate? Smaller? It's money, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but I can't change it. All right, let's see what we got here. Want some advice? Huh? Don't flash your bread around like that. Could get you rolled. No way. But thanks, mate. Buy your drink? Why not? What's yours? Nothing for me, thanks. I've got to go. Friend's waiting for me. Lucky friend. Never mind. I'm here. Hello? Uh, Dr. Cowper, please. I'm sorry, but he's not here. Uh, where is he? I don't know. Lady, I want to talk to him. I'm sorry, he's not here. Look, who's calling, please? Never mind. W when's he due back? I have no idea. Don't play games, lady. Where is he? I don't know. Look, who are you? I'll call back later. He'd better be there. Why don't we go and get something to eat? Yeah, I'm starving. I'll have to go home and change first. All right. How far? Just down the road. Good. Same again. We'll have one for the road and uh, go. Great. Just got to go and shake hands with a friend. <laughs> I think I've had too much to drink. I just lie down here while you get changed. Sure, Steve.
Hey. Hey, love a boy. How much? Hey! Sorry, girls, not this time. I'm from the police. You... Sit down. How did you find out about us? Your older friend of mine a couple of nights ago. But you weren't satisfied with that, so you blackmailed him. Now, I'll give you a choice. You either hand over the negatives, the prints, and the letters, or I run you in. We don't know anything about it. Honest. Okay, let's go. Jack, that's why I wanted those photos. Is he the one who picked up the money at lunchtime? What money? The first payment. Look, I said we don't know anything about Look, it. Look, Jack took the photos. He, he said he wanted them for insurance. Oh, yeah. No, it's true. He, he works with us. He, he runs this motel, but we don't know anything about blackmail. Okay. Does he live on the premises? Yeah, a couple of doors down. Go and get the letters and the photos. Oh, come on. You go. No, you I'll... stay here. Insurance. But that drink... It... Don't you remember? You went to the ladies' room. I didn't drink it. Can't win them all. It's also dangerous. What do you mean? We don't hurt them, just... Take their money. You could have killed somebody. But there's no violence. One drop too many of coral hydrate after a lot of alcohol can cause a heart attack. What? It's a fact. Nice Jack. job. Jack! Enormous fluctuation in the QRS rating. What? Let's have a look at those x-rays. It's a retropericardial wound. Here, I can't touch that. Where's the resident cardiac surgeon? Not on duty. Can you reach him? I'll try. No, forget it. I'll call Dr. Cowper. Yeah, that's right, Fred. Bullet penetrated the outer sheath of the heart and lodged in the muscle itself. Yeah, well, you better get a police escort. We haven't got much time. It's getting more erratic. Dr. Cowper's ready. He's coming in now. Good nurse. Everything right? Yes, Doctor. How is she? Just hanging on. Yes, I've seen the x-rays. It's going to be very tricky. That's why I called you. Mm. Well, let's get cracking. Uh, Stephen, you assist. Scalpel. What's wrong? I can't. Why not? My wrist. I can barely hold the scalpel. There's no time to get van der Kurs. You'll have to make the incision. Right. Now just relax, Stephen. Treat it as a simple operation. I'll guide you. the sheath. There. There it is.
Excellent, Stephen. Well, close her up and I'll buy you a drink. Time you go, Toby. Bobby? You can see it tomorrow. Well, what's going to happen to us? Well, I'll give Sergeant Gilbert all the details. Come on, off you go. Nothing more you can do here. There's the girl. Barbara's sister. Oh. Come on. You can buy me that drink. Right. You know, Stephen, you have the makings of a fine heart surgeon. Yeah, it's a pity you're a police doctor. Lucky for you, I am. 